Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Rule the Waves. We are in the midst of our Russian Let's Play here for the Tsar. We are trying to make Russia great again, and uh, we currently have an interesting dilemma. We're, our tensions are rising with Japan. It seems likely that a war may break out, even in this very episode. We'll see how that all plays out. We've built our first couple of dreadnoughts. We have two in service. The Japanese have one, but they're building two more. We're building a third as well, but it's almost two years away from being ready. They're building two battle cruisers. We have none. So in a war, the initial initiative would belong to us. It would shift to Japan over the course of the war, depending on how these all get constructed. Now, the other dilemma we have is the Japanese have eight battleships. We have 17, but a lot of ours are obsolete. The heavy cruiser department heavily favors them. They have 20 versus our 14. The light cruiser department favors us slightly with us building quite a few. And the destroyer department favors them, but we're building a whole bunch of new destroyers. So things will even out there in the end. The problem we have right now is Russia is we have quite a large budget at 307 million here, uh, which actually outstrips Japan by more than 30 million, um, as well as dramatically outstripping Austria-Hungary. Uh, but the problem is we have a lot of obsolete ships in our Navy right now, uh, including quite a few light cruisers. What I'm actually going to do here today is I'm going to go ahead and scrap all of these really small light cruisers that are obsolete and that cost a fair amount to upkeep. Right now they're all in mothballs, so they don't cost much. Um, but I'm thinking about, no, I don't even know why. Start the episode out with changing my mind. I guess I'll leave them where they are because we can always bring them back into service and use them as coastal patrol vessels. So scrap that idea. Um, but what I am going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and scrap some of our battleships. The rest of in-class battleship, uh, I think is probably worth keeping around. Uh, the, um, tri Svetlina class is also probably worth keeping around. Uh, but the Imperator Petre Veliki only has two 12 in or four 12 inch guns, but they're in single turrets. I don't like that layout. Um, they're relatively slow, they're obsolete, and they're expensive to maintain. So we're actually going to start off this episode right away with scrapping these three vessels. Uh, a cup, they're all actually in mothballs right now, so they're not terribly expensive, but I'm just going to scrap the three. We get about $1.7 million just for basically the metal or whatnot that we get back from them. Um, and actually, I think I'm going to scrap the rest of in class as well. Uh, they're all in Northeast Asia, so we'll kind of leave them where they are for now. Uh, and they're all in mothball at the moment, but we're going to end up scrapping them. I'm going to do something that might be a little bit controversial, however. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild the tri class. They're all obsolete, uh, and they're rather large at 15,500 tons. A large secondary battery of 6-inch guns, 16 of them, four 12-inch guns. And I think they could make a nice sort of quasi-dreadnought uh, battleship. So if we go here and we open the open design for rebuild, we drag this over here, you can see they've got the negative 1 quality 12-inch guns and they've got a 20 knot speed. So what we're actually going to do here is we're going to go ahead and drop this uh, down to 11, bring it up to 12. We're going to go ahead and upgrade to more powerful 12 inch guns, so we'll have better guns on these vessels. Uh, we still have the central range finder. We're going to improve that to central firing, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to increase the speed to... It doesn't look like it. Let's me... I could have sworn I'd be able to increase the speed. Let's go ahead and replace machinery. That frees up some weight. And we'll bump the speed up to 20 knots. You can see here that does hurt our weight remaining. But we'll just drop off one of those uh, six-inch gun secondary guns. And we'll be able to bump the speed up on this uh, vessel actually uh, by two knots. So we can increase it to a 21-knot vessel. Um, and then we can go ahead and uh, upgrade the main guns. The secondary batteries, we did lose one. Uh, so it's kind of... Uh, six on each broadside, I guess. Well, I don't, I don't know how that works. <laughs> a, a single turret that's, um, yeah. Let's do this, actually. Let's leave it at 20 knots. And then let's go ahead and delete these uh, torpedo tubes. We're never going to use those torpedo tubes. So actually, we'll keep the 16 six-inchers, uh, eight on each side, four in, in, in four turrets. And we will go ahead and upgrade the guns to 12 inches. We'll upgrade the speed to 20 knots. And we will go ahead and leave that as that uh, with this replaced machinery. Um, I'm not sure if it makes sense to add anything extra. I guess we could bump up the main battery guns to around 100, 100 rounds a gun. And then we'll kind of leave it as that. So we do have a penalty for our secondary guns. That already existed. 
uh, because we don't have the technology, which we started out with these ships, so I don't understand. But you can see here we've got a rebuild, uh, designation 1910. Go to the rebuild dialog. They will cost 1.8 million per month, but they'll only take 10 months, so they'll be done pretty quick. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit OK. Uh, oh, okay. So now we're rebuilding one of these uh, one of these vessels, I believe. Yeah. Uh, we've got three more that we can rebuild, so I'm actually going to do all three right away. Let's go ahead and uh, rebuild ship. Build ship. And rebuild ship. Now that's going to cost us a lot of money, but it's going to give us a much more capable secondary uh, battleship, if you will. Um, we're going to see here that our budget is going to be a nightmare so with those four ships rebuilding um and all of these other vessels that we're building at the moment we're nine million dollars in the red i'm actually thinking about those light cruisers that i said i wasn't going to scrap i'm going to go ahead and scrap them uh, i know i said i wasn't going to but let's do that we get 1.5 million we also lower our budget a little bit um, we're building so many light cruisers right now. I think it's fine that we scrap those. We've got a bunch that are coming off the ways very shortly. Um, so I think that'll be fine. We've moved the THG class to Northeast Asia. I'd like to consider rebuilding them as well, if only so we can get their, them those better 12-inch guns. Um, but we'll leave that as is for now. We're going to go ahead and move our dreadnoughts to the Pacific. Uh, so let's go ahead and move these vessels. Move them to the Northeast Pacific or Northeast Asia. And if we actually take a look at the map here and we take a look at the possessions, uh, Northeast Asia has quite a lot on station, um, but it looks like our limit, so we've got, can't see here, uh, we have 184,000 tons on station out of a total maximum of, it's saying, I don't even know what our maximum on station is here, base capacity 150. Base capacity 10, base capacity 1,400. So I'm not really sure what the rules are in terms of tonnage there. I don't know if we're exceeding it or not, um, but I guess it is what it is, and we'll find out. It doesn't really tell me. Um, it looks like we're within our range. We can have up to 1,590, and we've got 213, which I don't know how that's calculated, but it is, I guess, what it is. Uh, additionally, our new heavy cruisers, the XTRG class, are also going to go there. So we're going to go ahead and move these vessels to the Northeast Asia Squadron. Uh, they are more or less battle cruisers despite their designations. They also have incredibly long range. They'd be really ideal for commerce raiding and dealing with Japanese battle cruisers. Um, these other light cruisers, which we all completed, we're also going to move out to Northeast Asia. So we'll go ahead and move them on Northeast Asia. So we're really going to be stocking up. Uh, our vessels here in Northeast Asia. All of our new destroyers that we built previously are also headed out that way. What did we do to get two streams in two nights? I don't know. I just, I had a good stream last night. It wasn't a ton of people, or sorry, it wasn't a very long, so I figured if I'm not going to stream two hours, you know, I could stream back-to-back -back nights. Um, all right, let's take a look here. Those battleships are transit transiting. Uh, these vessels are... I'm going to... Uh, I'll I'll probably end up scrapping the rest of Unclass, but not until we have some replacements in in, uh, in theater, if you will. Uh, meanwhile, I am going to go ahead and kind of stagger these vessels' construction. So we're going to go ahead and halt two of the rebuilds. We'll keep two rebuilds going. We'll halt two of them. We're also going to go ahead and halt uh, two of the newer light cruisers, which are being completed until... Uh, the ones just a couple months away from completing are completed. That leaves us in 3.6 million in the red with 9 million in the bank. I think that's good enough to progress. Private shipbuilding expands the size of our docks. That's great. We can now build ships up to 27,000 tons. Uh, we move forward one month. Go ahead and move forward another month. Regional war seems imminent in the Balkans. One of our major arms manufacturers wants to step up uh, sales, so we can avoid it, or we can increase tensions. We'll increase tensions, which doesn't affect our tensions with Japan, just everybody else, but it gives us a little bit more money. Okay. So that new technology actually uh, should help remove our penalty. It allows turrets for secondary guns and battleships. That's good. 
Like cruiser was commissioned into the Navy during training exercises. An unidentified submarine is torpedoed and damaged our heavy cruiser, the Bogotar. She will be in dry dock for five months. Unfortunately, no clues who might be behind the misunderstanding. There is no doubt in my mind that it was Japan who... Oh, God. <laughs> I didn't realize that would trigger war immediately. I didn't think tensions would spike that high. Ah! All right. Um, so the enemy has two dread... Our ships are still transiting that way, by the way. This is just brilliant. So all of the ships I sent to the Northeast Asia are still one month away. Meanwhile, Japan might be launching a surprise attack. So I guess we'll have to see how this plays out. See nothing. What are they attacking? We have no vessels. Oh, we do. Um, why am I not looking? That was weird. I was zoomed in on the wrong sector, if you will. All right, well, I don't know how to deal with a surprise attack. Looks like we've got battleships here, the Imperator class. Yeah, we may be caught out of position. We'll see how this whole how this whole war unfolds. Um So we'll do faster. Go ahead and run for a bit. Light cruiser's been attacked by a submarine. I've never seen that happen in a battle. Attacked by a submarine, but I don't know what that means. Ship spotted, so these guys are incredibly close range. I don't know if our ships can move at all. Ah, shit. Hit by a torpedo. God. Doesn't look like any of our ships... Our ships all have orders to make steam, but none of them are moving yet, so I've never had a surprise attack like this happen before. So I'm guessing we're kind of sitting ducks here at this point. So that battleship was sunk. Well, this is already a disaster of a, of a fight. Now another battleship's being hit by a torpedo. All right, so this is going to go the way that the real Russo-Japanese war did. That's good to know. Any chance we sink any other destroyers? Oh, all right. Some of our vessels are getting underway. So we lost another battleship. The Petroplusk is sinking. The light cruisers are underway. does look like we might be sinking one enemy destroyer, but this battle is already going to be a defeat. Sure. Let's swing these guys out this way. Petroplusk is sinking, and we've been devastated in this area. Our best bets to, to hope to, you know, limit the damage. They've got a battle line out here in the east. The McKeezy class destroyer also looks like it might be sinking. Did sink. Okay. They have a battleship here. Yeah, pick up survivors. Pick up survivors. Maybe we're sinking a Yakuza class destroyer here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good lord, stop pulling me away. All right, so we're losing the cruiser Vestivis. I don't even know where that is. Oh, God. I just sailed the rest of my fleet over this way without realizing what the hell I was doing. This is going to be a disaster. We are going to get our asses kicked in this war. All right, so we lost a heavy cruiser and two battleships. We're going to. The enemy's lost a couple of destroyers. I guess that's good. Okay, she's sunk. Like another heavy cruiser, the Vist Vistia is going to sink. Oh my god. Well? Where is my other battle? Where's the THG class? Where's... 
50% of its ammunitions remaining? Where where are they? OB log. Alright, so she's on the other side of the coast, so at least she's apparently firing, but not losing any damage. Presumably. Can't imagine that uh she's gonna have much impact on this conflict but we'll try and get her around the coast we'll see if the battleship which bears our name can help turn the tide in this thing a little bit but what the problem is the way this game runs is uh the way this game runs is just you know it's going to keep going until everybody's dead or out of sight the problem is we're at port we're in port you'd assume we'd have some defensive mines or something looks like the sea's getting up a bit the color on the map just changed, which means the oceans are getting up a bit. Okay, now the other thing is the Japanese will probably start running out of ammunition at some point. And I think our THG class ship is already low on ammo. And we'll leave the destroyer now. I think I've sunk a f several other destroyers. It looks like one, two, three, four other destroyers. Five. Five other destroyers are sunk. So there's that, at least. As we lose another heavy cruiser. It's not even giving me text saying what's happening, though. That's kind of weird. I don't know if I, like, glitched the game out. here. How much ammo do we have left on our ship? Status. Main turrets. Forward ammo 160. Aft ammo 160. So we've still got a good deal of 4-inch guns. I don't know what we've fired here. Yeah. Oh, we haven't even shot any of our guns off. This guy. Way out in Kingdom comes nowhere. All right. So it shows our navy like all over the map. That's weird. All right. So I guess we just kind of keep going. We'll sail the THG toward this unidentified ship. Hopefully some of our other vessels kind of line up on us and we'll kind of just keep going. The cruiser sunk. Another one. I did not exercise any intelligent control over this lead action here. Expecting any submarines. And over here, I'm guessing this is a destroyer. It is. Maybe we can cripple the Japanese destroyer fleet? Granted, we've only sunk a few, but never know. ships this way. Let's go ahead and what's their main battle line? The THG, the death ride of the THG into the enemy battle line. Oh god. Japanese major victory. Russia loses two battleships, two heavy cruisers, two destroyers, one auxiliary, and one LT. Japan loses seven destroyers, which you know, that's a substantial amount of their destroyer fleet and nothing else. Good god, I have never seen a battle that decisive in this game. 5,000 victory points for the enemy. Um, designate this battle as a decisive or memorable battle for my accomplishments? Not really an accomplishment. Um, the shame of the Laotong Peninsula. This is going to be a tough one to recover from. Not only did we lose our, our battle fleet, but we are strung out like no other in a war against Japan. Uh, they have two battleships in service now, apparently. Two under construction. One battle cruiser in service. Um, nine battleships. So intelligence, uh, I guess that finished. Um, 
17 light cruisers. They still have 33 destroyers, despite the fact that we sank seven and they're building six. So uh, this will be a tricky war for us. Now we do have a bunch of money that we can use to uh, now that we're at war. So you can see we can resume some of these halted ships. By the looks of it, a lot of them are not going to be in service in time. We're going to go ahead and bring these mothballed ships into the active fleet. Um, several ships here are marked as being under repair. Their status here. Up, we need to put 18 vessels on patrol. Go ahead and put these ships that are active fleet and just working up into patrol. Well, I don't really want that kind of a ship in patrol. These guys are going to go on commerce rating. Let's do that. They're all obsolete cruisers, but they might be useful in commerce rating. And then we've got a whole bunch of ships we need to designate. Let's see. There's all the destroyers we really have left. We really were we that dumb to All right, everything in northern northern Europe is going to be patrol we're up to 5 out of 18 they're already over here good god all right i guess we're gonna have to assign a bunch of our destroyers to coastal patrol for the time being not going to really have any or waters. Okay. Condenser trouble. Japanese submarines sink one ship. Japanese ship intercepts the raider Virag in northern Asia. Auto resolve. The enemy retires. So no defeat there. Our ship's all there. Okay, so it looks like our vessels did make it to Northeast Asia. And a lot of our ships are currently undergoing repairs and refits. Uh, research breakthrough anti-submarine warfare technology. Q ships, Japanese submarines sink one of our ships. Russian raiders, Japanese raiders. And a fleet battle is joined. Now, this is a little bit risky here because we have a lot of ships that are not in good shape. And it looks like the Japanese want to fight a fleet battle. Estimated enemy forces... Six, no way, decline. Okay, nine coastal shipping, decline. We're going to give a lot of VP up by declining battle here. And I don't care about the kite. We just lost a heavy cruiser to an enemy submarine. We sank an enemy submarine. And keep declining these until I, my, my fleet looks like it's in better shape. Again, I'm going to have to keep declining these, these actions here. Now, it does look like a lot more of our ships are in shape now for actions. Where's this? Northern Europe. Everybody in Northern Europe. Let's do this. Coastal patrol for you guys. Raiders aren't going to accomplish much. We're going to need to win a fleet action. But everybody in Northern Europe few ships we have here will all be on coastal patrol. Gives us two that gives us some destroyers we can pull off coastal patrol. We're gonna put these guys in the fleet. These obsolete cruisers are all going on coastal patrol. Still shy seven ships. Yes, we'll put these guys. Still trying to get the crew qualities back. Go ahead and assign a few of our destroyers to Coastal Patrol. So, keeps us good for now. Budgetary wise, we're okay for now. We've got several ships that will be completed soon. I think we go ahead here and we accept a. We should fight on until we've secured victories that will give us leverage in the negotiating side, of course. 
And I think we will accept battle now. So there's a raid on coastal shipping. Well, guys, that war got off to a terrible start. Um, I misjudged the diplomatic effect. The war started. My fleet got ravaged. And if you want to watch a competent Rule the Waves player play, I recommend avoiding the next two episodes because this is going to be rough and it's going to be frustrating and it's not going to be pretty and it's... I. I don't fight battles detailed enough. I just kind of zoom through them. I kind of usually like to have one main ship as my commander and then the rest of the AI kind of forms up on it, but I don't like to micromanage. And, well, we'll see how that plays out. Um, not, you know, intending to spoil everything, but uh, there are some good moments in there. And there's some very bad moments in there, and we'll see how everything uh, plays out in the end. But it won't be pretty. It won't be smooth. It won't be, you know... A expert rule the waves player playing so if you want to see what not to do in some cases it might not be a bad watch uh, might be good for a laugh too but we'll see how it all plays out anyway guys thanks for tuning in once again and until next time this is the historical gamer saying thank you for watching and i'm out